Hello folks, everything new under the sun. This is part three, I believe, of the Midnight Solar Classic 150 series of videos. Today we're going to get a wireless bridge onto the charge controller itself so it can be wireless. It has a network jack, but if you need to get a wireless bridge, then you can make it wireless, so that's great. So this is a Vaughn. It's bought off uh, Amazon for about $33.00. Um, it is an Ethernet to Wi-Fi bridge, fairly simple to set up, really simple instructions. Um, so I have a whole video where I do an unbox and uh, kind of a, a walkthrough of the configuration, and we're going to do that a little bit later, um, but this is just a, a quick uh, video of what the unit looks like. So again, I got it off Amazon, about 30 bucks. This one's uh, this one will go about 100 meters in distance. Uh, barring any you know thick brick walls or anything, there is a, a, one of these devices that will go 500 meters uh, according to what they say. Uh, my use case is my, my Airstream is uh, parked about 50 meters away from my access point, so this is all I needed. And uh, this seems to work really well even inside the aluminum Airstream. So there you go. Here is a look at the device. It basically has a USB connector and an Ethernet jack. The Ethernet jack, of course, you need it to plug into the uh, charge controller. The USB is really uh, cool because you can do USB or you can plug any you can plug this into e uh, anything between 5 volts and 15 volts. So for my setup, a 12 volt off-grid solar camper, I can literally just plug it directly into my 12 volt battery bank uh, and that's really cool. Or uh, most people have USB um, um, sockets uh, in their camper somewhere and you can just plug it directly into that. On the back of the unit it's really nice, really handy because it, it gives you the uh, voltage details um, as well as all the you know the admin password for it, the uh, IP address um, for, for the factory settings that it comes with and the uh, uh, the config URL that you need to go to. So in the next part of the video here I will go through plugging it into the computer and uh, getting it working. You want to get it configured first. Once it's all configured and set up, then you can go into your camper, plug this in, and uh, it's basically, at that point, it's set and forget. Plug it in and forget it into your charge controller. So let's, let's have a look at the uh, configuration uh, now. So the first thing you want to do is go to the URL, of course, I was just testing to go to CNN.com to see if it would work. Um, and, and then you want to go to the uh, Vonitz config here. It will uh, show up in a second once it uh, actually uh, connects. So what I did here, I had to go into my network config. I had to switch from DHCP and then back to manual and then back to DHCP. So it would grab an IP address uh, from, uh, the from the bridge itself. The bridge does have a DHCP server on it. Um, so you'll see in a second here, um, I'll go to manual and then back to DHCP and it will uh, eventually come up with an IP address from the bridge uh, itself. I know it's the bridge because the rest of my Wi-Fi network is a 192.168.5.x uh, range and so this one is a 254.x uh, range for the IP address there. And then once it finally does uh, get its IP address, um, then you're able to go to the config and uh, go ahead and load it. So we pull up a browser, we go to Vonnet CFG, and here's where you enter the admin admin. That's the default username and password here. Of course, we leave English. Uh, it's a it's a fairly nice splash page, you know, for thirty bucks, not bad. Now here it will search for Wi-Fi. Uh, signals and uh, then you can pick the one that you want to connect to because we want to use this as a, a bridge this is the one that's going to be interacting with so I pick uh, my particular Wi-Fi network click next the visible bit of a wizard there now the source Wi-Fi password I think this is the password that actually is for um, the main access uh, your main Wi-Fi network I don't know I don't even know why it's plain text to be honest um, but as a bridge it will pass you through and uh, you'll be able to uh, get in, obviously, with your own device uh, to it. Um, and that also serves, uh, apparently, as the password for the hotspot. I know a particular uh, a professional on this interface. It's certainly a little weird. Um, they seem to have a lot of options here. Um, they've got some wireless security. You can turn on and off the local hotspot. Um, it has uh, a DHCP server on it. That's the LAN settings there. And uh, you have some options for the uh, speed of the uh, LAN port itself. 
Um, so kind of interesting settings there. You can set the host name of it. Restart the device. You can update its firmware. Export its firmware to a local file. Again, just going through the settings, you know, read your, read the manual. There's a bunch of options that you don't really need, uh, but it's fairly full featured in terms of uh, your basic um, repeater uh, bridge. And then, of course, you can update uh, the password, uh, which is highly recommended, so people don't get in there and uh, just hack all your settings out of there. So then on the operating status page, you can see that it is in bridge mode. That's exactly what we need to get a, a device that only has Ethernet jack on a Wi-Fi network. And then the next thing is to uh, go ahead and if all is good, you may need to reboot the unit. If all is good, then you can go ahead to your browser and uh, see if you can actually uh, load a page. So that's what I do. Um, I went to CNN and it loaded fine and all was good there. We now have a working Wi-Fi bridge, so now we go to the camper and we open up the Classic 150 or whatever midnight charge controller you have, and we're going to go ahead and plug in the Ethernet uh, Ethernet cable into the port. Now I had a ca cable there already, so I, I just pulled that out. I had that directly hardwired into my laptop before just testing the local app that was in part two of the series. So I'm taking that out. I'll go ahead and you know, uh, plug in the new wire. It's a little bit tricky because the, the latch on the Ethernet is on the bottom uh, of the, the Ethernet port there. So taking one out is a little, bit, uh, a little bit more tricky. So in this case, for this test, I put the lid back on. I just had a little USB um, battery, battery bank basically, which I was using to power the USB side of it. Um, it was all configured at this point, so literally all we have to do is power it up and uh, hope that the Wi-Fi reaches from inside the Airstream uh, to the uh, main access point in the house, which again is 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 probably uh, probably 30, 40 meters away uh, from the camper at this point. So it'll start flashing. All is good. You're you're going to want to put this high up in the air uh, so that it's not uh, obstructed by any uh, big things, uh, especially if your camper's far away from uh, the main access point. Then you go into the menu of the Midnight Classic, and you got to go over to your network settings. So the uh, the gotcha here is that if you it's set uh, to DHCP, so that's good. But uh, in order to pull a new DHCP address from the Wi-Fi network, you actually need to reboot it, and that's what I didn't show here. Um, I, I actually went after the fact. Uh, if I rebooted it, it would have pulled an IP address. What I did after the fact, I went ahead and set a manual address because I knew what the specific IP address was um, to get it working. Um, but if you reboot it, it does work in DHCP and will pull an address. And the lots of blinky blinky with green and, and blue means your uh, Vonnet's Wi-Fi bridge is working. So now we go over to the computer, which is inside the house. This is about uh, 20 meters away from the camper. Um, it, you can connect uh, to either um, the Vonnet's Wi-Fi bridge itself uh, or your main access point which is interesting you can use it as a bridge inside your camper to go back to your access point it's a little bit slow um, going that many hops um, so in this case I loaded up the lo local app I'm totally wireless now on my laptop loaded up the local app and uh, the camper is now on the network the classic 150 is now on the network now I did do a video looking at the various features of the local app. I'm not going to go over that now, but you can look at the readings there. It's showing a live reading of 13.1 uh, volts on the right hand side, <clears throat> and uh, it's pulling in about two watts right now. It's evening time, so really nothing's coming in. You can see on the left hand side of the chart um, the voltage is about 25 volts. That's from 200 watt panels where you would expect, you know, 50, uh, 40, 50 volts coming uh, in from them when it's actually uh, sunny out. There you can see 41 there. So it gives you all the same uh, features and, and, and details as it would if you were uh, plugged into it locally uh, via Ethernet. What's nice now is that we can now move on to the next step. Now that this thing is wirelessly connected, wirelessly connected uh, rather to um, our network, now we can look towards the cloud monitoring service that Midnight Solar uh, provides for free. So that's going to be the next one but yeah in this local app you can do all the settings like I say as if you were hardwired um, uh, configure uh, the various options uh, download export the data from it 
etc etc so it works just fine it works just as fast as if you were hardwired into it so thanks for watching guys i do believe this is part three of the midnight classic 150 series this was just a demonstration of making um, your ethernet classic 150 into a wi-fi client and uh, then connecting up to it with the local uh, app over the wireless network and it all worked perfectly and flawlessly the big thing is to get your wireless bridge, whether you use this Vonitz unit that I got off Amazon for about 30 bucks or something else. The big thing is just to configure it and make sure it works before you go out into your camper or before you go somewhere. You know, if your camper is at a storage facility, you want to make sure it works before you get out there, uh, of course, and always bring your laptop if you need to configure something. But yeah, it just worked, plugged in the Ethernet, and you're good to go. So in the next video, we'll take a look at the Midnight Solar Classic uh, online monitoring, cloud-based monitoring service. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys in the next video.